Well, here we are at the uh, Cape Kennedy uh, Space Centre, the, the Visitor Centre, and I'm very pleased this morning to uh, introduce you to Barbara Morgan, teacher and astronaut. And uh, we're really privileged to have a chat to you about your life, in particular, all of the wonderful work that you've done, and really quite an extraordinary life. Uh, but let's start with uh, when you were young as a, uh, a student, as a girl. Uh, what sort of sparked the ambition to become a teacher? <laughs> Thank you, John, and I'm thrilled to be here and uh, so excited to be able to share this wonderful Kennedy Space Center with you all. Thank so you. thank you. When I was a youngster, girls, I, girls could basically do about four things. They could be a mom, a teacher, a secretary, or a nurse. Yep. And that was the world that I grew up in. One day I was at the bookstore on campus and like I said, I was really resisting education. But, and I don't know why I did this, but I kind of wandered over to the education section of the bookstore. And there was a book sitting there with a really interesting looking woman on the cover. And I picked it up and was fascinated and read it from cover to cover. And it was somebody I'd never heard of before, but her name was Maria Montessori. And I uh, just loved that so much. And I loved her uh, theories on, on how kids learn and everything. At some <laughs> yeah. point, um... Uh, space came into the radar for you. How yeah. did that happen? Okay, so I had always been been very interested in space. You know, I had my eyes glued to the TV along with everybody else when Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon and Which all that. Which I might add, came via Australian radio telescope at Thank Parks. you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's great. By the way, and Australia also helped us with our... Uh, with our um, uh, ham radio contacts yes, uh, while we were flying on STS-118. And of course, you know, many years later, you you joined the program, but you also joined uh, the program as an astronaut, doing the work of an astronaut apart from the teaching. So um, you had yeah. to, there's a lot of skill yeah. involved with that. So a lot of training, I imagine. Right. So um, I had the pleasure and honor of uh, training with uh, Ch with Krista McAuliffe, our wonderful teacher yes. in space and the Challenger crew. I served as Krista's backup. And then after the horrible accident, NASA asked if I would continue on. And uh, when they're ready to fly again, uh, to, f to fly as a uh, teacher. And um, uh, it, years later, NASA decided not to do it that way and uh, basically asked if I would apply to the astronaut class of 1998 and we'd see how it goes. And you did. I, I did. And uh, uh, with the teacher's heart. <laughs> yes. And of course, you had the opportunity to uh, apply a bit of that on the mission. But uh, let's just talk briefly about. Um, the actual STS-118 and okay. uh, the, the day that it was and uh, before we ask you about leaving planet Earth we're just going to cross to uh, a bit of video of the shuttle as it takes off. Six, go for engine start. Four, three, two, one, zero and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour expanding the International Space Station while creating a classroom in space. Houston now controlling the flight of Endeavour. The space shuttle begins its journey back into orbit. Endeavour rolling onto the proper alignment, heads down, wings level for the eight and a half minute ride to orbit, taking aim on the International Space Station for docking on Friday. 30 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines will soon throttle back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket to reduce the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. view from long-range trackers, now from a camera on the external fuel tank showing the bird's eye view of Endeavour heading towards space. 54 seconds into the flight, Endeavour already eight miles downrange, standing by for the throttle up call from Capcom, Chris Ferguson. Endeavour, go with throttle up. Go at throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Scott Kelly, joined on the flight deck by pilot Charlie Hobaugh, flight engineer Rick Mastracchio and Tracy Caldwell, Dave Williams, Al Drew and Barbara Morgan seated down on the mid deck, Morgan racing towards space on the wings of a legacy. That was, that was just magnificent and of course it's always a thrill even 
uh, on television or video to watch this gigantic rocket launch into space. And, you know, the, the thing that I find amazing, you know, 2.3 million people fly around the skies of America every day, mm -hmm. uh, but only hundreds have ever left the Earth as astronauts. It's such a difficult thing to do. So, of course, what was it like? You're sitting in the rocket, you've, you've done the training, yeah. and, you know, the, the countdown happens and you're off. Yeah. What sort of feeling is that? It, it's great. You have been training, 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 training. You've done this in the simulator um, many, many times. By the way, the public can do a simulator, uh, a simulated launch, a shuttle launch right here at the Kennedy Space Center. Yeah. It, it's very close to the real thing. It's, it's very fun to do and very cool. Um, launch, you are ready to go, and you and your crewmates are ready to go and when that rocket takes off you feel the biggest push you know you've ever felt on your back just pushing you into space you're accelerating to 17,500 miles an hour or about 28,000 kilometers an hour yeah. you reach space in eight and a half minutes and it's it's quite a ride I didn't know what I would actually I knew I'd be t paying attention obviously I knew I'd be very alert uh, we have things that we are also very much paying attention to and I, I knew I'd be doing all that I didn't know if what kind of thoughts might pop in my head but the thing that popped in my head first of all I had this huge smile on my face like all right we're finally on our way it was kind of plastered there because of the <laughs> g-forces you get <laughs> but um, but uh, what was going on in my mind was okay we're finally on our way we're heading to the International Space Station that we're gonna help build we're gonna be there in three days we're gonna be there in three days I can't wait and that was the thought that was going on through through my mind as we were launching Thanks, Scott. Hey, it's great being up here. We've been working really hard, but it's, it's a really good, fun kind of work. So we're really having a great time. And we're very much looking forward to docking with the International Space Station tomorrow and joining in with our crewmates, uh, Clay, Oleg, and Fyodor. I guess uh, one thing I wanted to tell you about was when you first get into orbit, um, it, it takes a little getting used to. And all of yesterday, even though I kept my head upright so it looked like a normal ceiling and a normal floor and normal walls, I felt like I was upside down the whole time. And the other surprise is when you have something that you just set aside, even if it has Velcro on it, you set it aside and within uh, 30 seconds it's gone and you have no idea where it went to. So we've got a lot of fun challenges up here and we'll be do it playing some treasure hunts. That's wonderful. Now, here at the Kennedy Space Center, the Visitor yeah. Center, there's, there's still plenty of work for astronauts to do. There's ways to meet astronauts like yourself yeah. and uh, lots of, as I say, fun activity, particularly with the, uh, the shuttle launch that you've just described. Yeah. Uh, what other things can people expect when they come to the Kennedy Space Center? Oh, my goodness. So, first of all, you may only have a day to do this. Definitely come. But uh, if you can manage three days, I think that's a you're gonna you're gonna really learn a lot it every time I come I learn something new many things new but it, it really takes about two to three days to be able to experience everything you uh, when our government isn't shut down and hopefully by the time this shows it won't be shut down um, you can take bus tours you go out to the launch pads you go past the vehicle assembly building where this is all put together you're gonna see all the new stuff going on here now so where Boeing is getting ready to uh, fly our folks and others to you know other other countries to the International Space Station on the commercial vehicle you'll see the SpaceX operations and uh, with the Dragon spacecraft you'll get to see uh, some some of the artifacts from current stuff going on right now uh, for example the Orion spacecraft that we will be using for seven astronauts to send them uh, to the International Space Station but also beyond low Earth orbit to the moon and Mars and uh, for the first unmanned un I hate to use that word so I'm gonna say unhumaned space uh, unhumaned space test mission for the Orion that capsules back here and it's right here at the Kennedy Space Center for you to visit Standing up close and personal to Space Shuttle Atlantis, you cannot get any closer to a real space shuttle that's flown in space, and you get to walk all the way around. You can see in the payload bay, you can see underneath, you can see the back end, everything. What I love best about that, too, is besides all the simulators that you can try out yourself and the displays, interactive displays to look at, many of the docents who are there standing there just to help out are NASA employees so they they 
worked on the shuttle program for wow. years and years and years, and uh, they won't necessarily tell you that because uh, they're pretty he he humble. Mm -hmm. But you can um, you can just ask them, hey, did you work on the shuttle program? And you know they'll they'll tell you all about it. They can't wait to tell you all about their work. Well, Barbara Morgan, it's been an absolute pleasure. My name's John Mamonski here for Provincial Media at uh, the Kennedy Space Visitor Centre. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Endeavour's descent rate is 20 times higher and 7 times steeper than a commercial airliner on this final approach to the Kennedy Space Center landing facility. The landing gear is down and locked. Main gear touchdown. Nose gear touchdown. Deploying of the drag chute to delay to assess uh, the conditions of the crosswinds on the orbiter as it rolls out on the uh, runway. 1-5 at the Kennedy Space Center wrapping up a nearly 5.3 million mile mission. Endeavor returning the first educator mission specialist Barbara Morgan to Earth to begin the next step in her journey to inspire future generations to explore, learn, and build a better future.